Kilo One, Sierra Lima Delta. This is Oscar Romeo Four ISS. I have you loud and clear. How me? Over. I am ready, and welcome to the International Space Station. I look forward to speaking with you. Over. interest in space exploration and being an astronaut goes back to when I was in fourth or fifth grade and first learned about uh, NASA and astronauts, and in particular, the Apollo missions to the moon. I thought they were incredibly fascinating. Um, the sense of exploration that they uh, encompass was amazing to me, and well, to, even to this day, I still think the Apollo missions are some of the most, or it's probably the most incredible achievement that humankind uh, has done. Um, and that's what influenced me to become an astronaut. Over. Hi, Ethan. Yes, in addition to the educational or academic background in STEM, you also need to have some practical or operational experience. Uh, the work we do on board the space station is very hands-on. We're often taking things apart and fixing them. So any type of operational experience is important. Uh, in addition to that, you need good interpersonal skills. You need to be able to communicate well, to work well in small teams. Um, and just be able to get along with other people uh, because you will be confined to a small area in a small group. Um, and those, those are some of the additional things you need to be able to, to do. Over. Hi, Dory. Um, the first thing that happens when you get selected as an astronaut is that you have two years typically of basic training where you learn all of the basic skills and knowledge that you need to be an astronaut. And once you have finished basic training, you're ready to be assigned to a flight. And once you get assigned to a flight, you have an additional two years of training where you learn all the specific skills you need for your mission. And that includes things like learning how to do a spacewalk, learning how to control the robotic arm, how to maintain and repair the, the, all the systems on board the space station, and of course, how to conduct that we do up here. Over. Well, I think in addition to uh, a background in STEM, what most space agencies are looking for uh, is individuals with a very broad range of skills uh, who are good at collaborating, uh, good at uh, living and working together in small teams. Because in the future, not only will we have long duration missions on board the space station, but we're also going to be sending astronauts further into space as a first step back to the moon and maybe after that onwards to Mars. And so it's very important that astronauts have a broad range of skills because they will be much more, uh, they will have to rely much more on themselves. Uh, in the future, um, and they will have to live for longer periods of time in small groups. Over. Hi, Bethany. Yeah, we have a great community up here. We are typically seven astronauts at a time on board the International Space Station, representing many different nations. Currently, uh, we have five different nationalities up here, um, and it's just a, a fantastic team of people, highly trained, highly skilled. Uh, we work all day long doing exciting uh, science and technology development, and then we uh, enjoy the, our free time together in the evenings and on the weekends. Over. Kevin, 
that's actually one of the most difficult things to do uh, because there's nowhere on earth where we can properly train in, weightless, in weightlessness. Um, there's no room where you can switch off gravity, unfortunately. So the only way we can simulate weightlessness for longer periods of time is to train underwater, which is how we train for spacewalks. But it's still not the same because there's a lot of drag from the water uh, around you. Uh, and so you don't actually learn what it means to live and work in weightlessness until you get to space. And that's probably one of the biggest challenges for astronauts is how do you actually work efficiently in microgravity conditions. Over. Hi, Simona. Microgravity affects us in many, many different ways. You know, first of all, being weightless is very similar to lying in bed. You don't use your muscles. You don't really use your bones uh, to keep you upright. And so your body begins to uh, get rid of your muscle mass and your bone density. Uh, so that's why we have to exercise two hours every day. Uh, our immune systems are also uh, affected by weightlessness, by the isolation, by the stress that we're under, and of course the radiation, the exposure to radiation that we receive in space. Our vision is also uh, impacted probably because there's a fluid shift inside our bodies which increases the pressure uh, in our brain. So many, many different ways that our body is affected. 